Swinburne University of Technology. Hi everyone, welcome to um, the Digital Quorum and welcome to this session on SAP CAT Game Development Project. So today we've got um, Lyndon Walker, who's a senior lecturer in applied statistics, and he's going to be talking about the prototype for the SAP CAT game. So I'll hand you over to, to Lyndon. Thank you. Great, thank you. So today is going to be a mix of me showing you a game that I've developed uh, and I have two of my programmers here who will be able to answer technical questions and tell you what it's like to deal with an academic uh, and I guess I'll talk about what it's like to deal with programmers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I think we can probably just get started. Uh, so basically there was two versions of this game. Uh, so I'm going to give you a bit of the history and background of where it all started and where the idea came from. Uh, we'll go and have a look at the first version of the game uh, and then with the second version of the game again kind of talking about ideas and money and some of the things I had to think about and some of the things I wish I thought about and uh, yeah that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, I was going to say it probably won't take the whole hour, but I've made that promise many times before uh, and I normally turn into a liar. So it may not take the whole hour. Um, basically at any point if a question about anything comes into your mind, just ask then. Uh, I will make sure there is time at the end for questions, but quite often there might be something that's on the screen that you want to point at or talk about or things like that. Okay. So the first version of Stats Cats came about because I had an idea that I want to do something game related uh, and I really had no idea what but I wanted something that was going to help my stats students, particularly uh, first year students who have very big cohorts uh, doing the first year stats courses and I wanted it to be game related and fun and interesting and that was about as far as my thinking had got and I applied for a Herdza seed grant. Uh, and these were only two and a half thousand dollars and I got turned down. Uh, and so I kind of shelved this idea and kind of just kept doing other things. And then I got an email end of January, I think it was something like 28th of January last year. And they said, we've got some money left over. So you weren't one of the five, I think there was five grants and there was 70 applicants. And uh, they said, well, we know we didn't give you money in the first place, but we ended up with a little bit of money spent, uh, left over that we haven't spent. Um, is your project still viable? And I said, yeah, it definitely is. And they said, there's a condition. And I said, okay. And they said, the condition is that all of the money has to go back by the end of February. This was 28th of January, and I already had plans to fly back to New Zealand for a fortnight during February. Uh, and they said, you have to spend this money in a month. Um, so. I think some of you probably are of the generation that remember the movie Brewster's Millions. A couple of people, yeah. So I had this promise of money, but I had to spend it. I had to spend it very quickly. But it still had to be about the thing that I was going to, said that I was going to spend it on, which had a timeline of mm, six, nine months, maybe a year. And I had to take that and just go down into a month. Um, so I said, Yes, I can do that. This sounds like an excellent opportunity and I was kind of at the same time going, this seems like a really bad idea to try and cram this into a month. Um, so they started doing the paperwork uh, and for those of you that have had external grants, the amount of paperwork that you have to do and organise and people to find and people to sign stuff and then once this person signed this something then someone else has to sign something. Trying to do that and trying to do that in late January when no one's around is really, 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 really hard. So I was running around the university with pieces of paper trying to trap people rather than go through official channels to sign this, I need to get everything done. Um, so in the period of two days, I managed to find some programmers and organize all the paperwork to get the money and do the contracts for the programmers and do my ethics application and I still didn't quite know what I was going to do, but I had the paperwork and I had some money and I had some programmers. Um, so I sat down with these programmers. Uh, they were final year, uh, I think joint, I think it's the same as you guys, so joint computer science gaming 
Is that the right description? Yeah, the okay, the yeah. Um, so students that had a programming background but also a bit of games development, they were in the final year. Uh, Andrew Trevelyan, who I've not met in person yet but have talked to on the phone, has been fantastic twice now uh, with giving me suggestions of some final year students who he said these would be great students for doing a programming project. Uh, and both cases he was 100% right, they were fantastic. Uh, so I got these two programmers and they came to my office and we sat down and I said, well, here's, here's my grant application. Um, I said that I was going to do a game thing and this is my budget and it needs to be about stats and it needs to be a game. And that was, that was my first meeting with them. And so we kind of sat there and brainstormed about what, what, could we, what could we do, what would students like, what, how could I integrate statistics and games together. Uh, and one of, the, one of the programmers said, well, what about some sort of virtual pet type thing? So they could answer statistics questions to get food and feed the pet. And if you didn't feed the pet, then it died. Uh, and I kind of thought about that and I thought, well, I don't want anything negative. I want this to be a purely positive experience. I don't want anyone's virtual pet dying. Um, but I liked the idea. And so we kind of brainstormed some more and I showed, uh, showed the program as my Blackboard site. Uh, and one of the things I have on my Blackboard site is I have a page that's kind of hidden away. You have to, you have to kind of go through some folders to find it. And it's just got fun stuff and funny stuff and silly stuff. And in amongst it, it's got some pictures of my cats. And it's all uh, adaptively released. So as students complete tests, watch videos, do readings, uh, this fun stuff gets unlocked. Some of them don't care, some of them love it. Um, so they started to see kind of this cat theme and then somehow that turned into the story of with my flipped classroom teaching, uh, I record a lot of the videos at home because my office is too noisy and sometimes my cats join in. So I've got a couple of my flipped classroom videos where you can hear cats meowing in the background. Uh, and the first time it happened, the video was going really well. I was really happy with everything I said and I thought, I'm not going to redo this video. So I introduced my cat and then the cat kind of meowed periodically through the video. And it ended up being great because the students, when they got to that point, they started asking, oh, what's the name of your cat? And I knew they'd watch the video because they were asking about the cat that they would only know about if they'd watched the video. So anyway, there was a bit of a cat theme in amongst, um, in amongst some materials and that kind of became the, the topic of conversation. And so we started talking about having some sort of going to be a game, it was going to have some stats questions, it was going to have some cats. And very conveniently, stats and cats rhymes, so it kind of sounded quite good. Uh, and so we got out some paper and we started sketching pictures of cats and pictures of where questions would be. Uh, and so we ended up with this idea of stats cats as a virtual game. We had a very, very short time. Month is hardly any amount of time at all. Uh, so we had this plan and organized kind of weekly meetings uh, for these, these four weeks of February to try and get this project out. And we pretty much got to, with, with that amount of time, that amount of money, kind of a point that I was quite happy with. So we'll have a look at the game. Um, and I'm going to try and be clever and record what we're doing as we are doing it. Um, this is. Okay, ignore him, he's, he's version two. Okay, so here was version one. And so it was programmed in an interface which is called Unity. Um, for those of you that have been involved with game design, it's a pretty common tool for programmers to use. Uh, it gives them a, access to kind of a lot of objects and bits and pieces that they don't need to do from scratch. Um, anything you want to add? On Unity. It provides a web player. Yes. Program yep. That, so there's a lot of back-end engine stuff that would have makes it easy to deploy. Yeah. Yep. Update and things like that. Yeah. So. so that was certainly one consideration: is that dealing with the students, and particularly with the Open University students, they have different kinds of computers, different operating systems. I uh, wanted something that I could, as reliably as possible, play across different systems. Uh, I decided I would not try and go for mobile devices, so just PC, Mac. Um, but within PC and Mac, um, 
different browsers, different operating systems, kind of as broad as, as possible. Uh, and so we ended up with this little guy. Um, and so you can kind of see along the top, we've got a menu, uh, we've got questions. And so we had some different levels of questions. The questions would come up. The interface was all kind of, kind of basic, but this was, this was a prototype, and this was a prototype where we had a tiny time window. Um, so to some degree, it was about getting, getting something that worked and could go in front of the students. Uh, and so we had questions, and as you answered questions, they got increasingly difficult. Um, what is the median of those numbers? Three, excellent. See, I'm forcing you guys to do stats too. Um, so as, as we're answering the questions, you can see that we just earned a coin for being able to identify the, um, the median. And we're not gonna continue. So we can go off to the shop. Uh, and unfortunately, it doesn't really give us pictures, but we can buy a hat and we can buy a monocle and we can buy a jetpack. So all the things that our cat would need to do its cat stuff, I guess, and a litter tray. Um, so we had some stuff that we could buy the cat to dress the cat up. Um, and as we purchased them, we uh, could kind of get him wearing those bits and pieces. And we could just kind of play with him and we can click and he runs around and really pretty simple stuff. Uh, there were some very basic trophies. So as you completed questions, you'd get trophies. Um, so pretty basic game, pretty basic idea, uh, but some amount of novelty value. Um, and really what I was what I was aiming for was some of this is things that I, I already have in Blackboard. I have formative exercises on Blackboard, but Blackboard is really boring. Um, and there's tons of formative exercises, and some students ha like sitting down and doing formative exercises. Some students don't so much, and so this was my opportunity to maybe distract them a little bit with the cat and buying stuff. And it was the students that weren't really doing the formative exercises. I had a pretty good idea of who they were. They tended to be the younger students. Uh, I'm trying to remember what other, certainly age was one of the big ones. I think there was a couple of other factors. Um, from previous surveying and investigating I'd done of students that were and weren't doing the blackboard formative exercises. Did you have any concerns about it coming across as too childish? I think it's great, but yep. I'm just wondering like, if that was in your thinking as you were designing it. You know, that's, it's always a fine line with these games, isn't it? Um, yes. It at no point has come up. I, they, like, it, it's definitely something to consider is that if you're, if you're putting something in front of students, and I think if, you, if you're doing it for first year students in particular, where it, the, there needs to be some amount of bridging. It needs to be kind of simple enough that a student that is maybe a mature student, uh, the open uni students, can, can kind of start at the right spot and get into it. Um, so it is, it is certainly something to be considered. Um, with this one, it hasn't, hasn't really come up. Um, so game game got built, put it in. Um, as far as the game design goes, the cutesy look, especially with gamers, so the younger, the, young, the younger audience, they sort of expect that sort of thing with a game like this. So it's within the way the genre works anyway. So it wasn't so much of a concern, at least when we came into the project and we already had sort of this template to work from it wasn't hard to see it working, even with more mature students. So they just, you know, so long as it's got the substance and the detail. Yeah. The, yeah. the questions were was substantial, and the playing around was was the reward. So you know that didn't have to be as heavily sort of uh, yeah. involved so if you wanted to. Yeah. 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 There's a difference between simplistic material that works your way up to challenges, because these are first year students. And they, I can access it from week one. And if you show up from week one and you go to level one, well, you're not expecting graphs. So there's a difference between offering childish material and just getting to the simple content and building. Yeah, I think, I think having, having a substance that links to the, core, the unit material, 
I think is a big is a big thing as well. So the questions that are in there, and admittedly we saw a pretty simplistic one with the median, but I did build up in this SPSS output and some slightly more complex questions, and that's what they're seeing in the unit materials. So I think having that link is really important in terms of them wanting to use it, but also in terms of not it not being seen just as something that's childish or a novelty or that kind of thing. Um, I did have mature students uh, several times email saying, I sit with my 10 year old and we play this together. So, so there was that kind of, that, that appeal that I hadn't really thought about seemed to happen. So there's one, then two. Um, I was just wondering, was there any tie into assessment in terms of students didn't go on to stats cards, did they lose some points to contribute to their final grade? No, so it was purely formative. And what was your uptake percentage then of the, of the people doing the unit, how many people jumped on you? Uh, we'll look at some usage stats in a second, but very high, very high. I just wanted to add, I thought it was a really brilliant theme you chose because it's very friendly and it's accessible, and so it emotionally gives people that opportunity to not feel threatened at all. So they're in that space, you know, sort of the game space, and they're also in this sort of like non-threatening space where it's like, you know, the play, so it's very encouraging. It's really great to know. It, that, it does, um, that whole idea of it being cute dovetails into how Linda did want impact as well as all the very positive experience so you know the, the childish sort of thing I wouldn't call it childish it's whimsical more, more cartooning and cutesy um, yeah and yeah it, 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 it lowers barriers so it's harder for a cat to be negative negative <laughs> <laughs> you know, feedback coming from a cat world it's not so bad <laughs> what's your uh, budget for each uh, so for this one it was two and a half thousand. Uh, for the second one it was slightly under ten thousand. Um, and once you start paying people research assistant rates, that gets chewed up really, really quickly. Um, most of the money went uh, to the programmers for their labours. Um, with this one, this was just set up on Weebly.com, which is a free. Um, free hosting service. So there was, um, I don't know if there was anything outside of paying paying staff. Uh, with the, the other one, which we'll, we'll see in a little bit, uh, we've got the uh, statscats.org um, address, uh, paid, paid server space, um, which we'll talk about a little bit more. Um, some bits and bits and pieces, kind of, to, to make the game look a little bit better and kind of add some complexity, as well. So some of the add-ons, um, the the commercial version of Unity, as well. Um, with the first one, we were just using the free version. So this one was very much around kind of anything that could be the free version without impacting. It was uh, the next one. There was a little bit more consideration to. There was a little bit more money, so proper server, things like that. Um, uh, probably the thing that has changed the most, or the, the thing that has the direct impact on me is that it's going to stop in May working on Chrome. Um, so that's been the bigger issue. I think we investigated uh, what licensing conditions were around educational non-profit use. Um, and I don't think nothing's changed in terms of that that we're aware of, is there? Uh, not as far as I'm aware, yeah. as far as releasing things. Because it's the, we use the free version for it, um, and there's no commercial yeah. switch. Yeah. Okay, so that was our StatsCats version one. Uh, so, in terms of usage, I wasn't really able to easily gauge exactly how many of the students were using it. Um, but from this you can see, uh, this, these are, are daily points. I think at most we had just slightly over 100 people in a day using it. Uh, those are this graph is unique visitors, so that's unique IP addresses. Um, and one thing you'll notice is that 
I released it. There was a weekend, um, so it was a little bit more popular, and it tailed off really quickly. And the reason for that was that the question banks only covered one topic. So one of the things, um, what we've just seen, that was very much a prototype. It was a proof of concept. I wanted to be able to go and ask for more money somewhere and say, this is, this is the thing I've already made, and here is my evidence of it doing a pretty good job, and here's where I want to expand. Um, building question banks, writing questions, setting that kind of stuff up um, is hard work and takes quite a lot of time, and it was time that I didn't have. So for that kind of week and a bit, where that was the topic we were doing, that kind of basic intro stats stuff. Uh, it was great, the students loved it. Uh, definitely felt like quite a high percentage of the students were accessing it, and you can see kind of at a couple of revision points, they came back to it again. Um, I surveyed participants, uh, so we can see that most of them agreed or strongly agreed that it helped their learning. Uh, and nearly all of those that weren't in agree or strongly agree were in neutral. Um, there was two out of 107 that didn't like it. Uh, and I'll show you one of their comments in a second. Uh, and 81 out of 106 said that they would like additional topics. So I felt that that was fairly compelling, that putting effort into expanding this, there would be benefit. Yep? One off release of content. It was one off, yeah. yeah. So here is this game, it covers this module. Um, again, with me kind of getting that, here is the month where you've got to get everything done. Um, that plus two and a half thousand being very, very little money for this kind of thing, um, that really limited. So, so I was consciously going, okay, here is, here is the box. This is, this is what I'm gonna do. I know all the things I'd love to do, but I can't. Um, so it was it was there as a one off, yeah. And then, um, as well as um, individual hits, were you able to track how many of them completed the game, having made it to level four, like the hardest? No, just... no. That's that's something that even now I think we don't quite have full. We we were able to get people stuck in, but that's only yeah, so yeah. So so we've got we've got visits, but the actual. Um, question answering, um, particularly with what we've, uh, that, that first version, it wasn't storing, the only things that it was storing, it was storing as cookies on the person's computer. So nothing was coming back to me, nothing was sitting on the server, uh, and it was designed that way, partly so that when, when you loaded it up, kind of, once you had that, had that first loading screen, everything was there. If you, if you disconnected, you could just keep playing, it had everything sitting there. Um, as soon as, as soon as I needed server space and I needed to be storing information about what they were doing, um, I probably wasn't going to be able to do that on the free servers and it was going to be a lot more coding and work. Um, so from where I am with the version 2, um, that would probably be one of the, the main things to add on, would be to actually observe what, how students are going, what's happening with their answering. One, and yeah. Um, to understand the uptake, how many Um, so the students we are looking at there uh, were open uni students. It was not via iPad, so Mac and PC, but it was like announcements on Blackboard to say here is this thing and here's what you can do with it. Um, 500 students, 500 students, and I think, I mean, I had 107 people do the survey. So it's just the ones that were, did the survey. Um, however many that played it and didn't do the survey. A little bit hard to say, but I, I, I would, 200 out of 500, maybe? And it was just, and it, one difference between this and the, the next version was that this was, here is something you may wish to use. Um, I kind of added, made it a bigger part of the course for this year uh, with the new version. Yep, and then. <laughs> Just in terms of um, completion time. Yep. Um, if somebody sat down and was going to do it, would they, you know, from beginning to end for that, um, answer all the questions? Yep. 
guess it depends how bright they are, um, how much they've engaged with the the textbook, the videos, learning like the the learning materials before doing the questions. Because uh, something that I've found not just with this, but in, with other formative exercise teaching in general, is that certainly there, there, there's some like sometimes quite large percentage of students that want to jump into doing stuff, and ideally they would cover the content first, but they kind of they do the doing with the watching and the reading and the, the just kind of all at once. Um, so if you'd already studied the material, uh, there was five levels with five or six questions each, you'd be done in half an hour, like it wasn't big. Um, so if you already knew the material, you could sit down and, and do it. Um, but I've seen Blackboard quizzes where there's 10 questions and the student's taken three or four hours because they're, they're, they're learning and answering as they go. Um, so it could take longer if they were doing that. Um, I know that this, this part was a prototype, so that it was you know, quite limited, but I'm just wondering from your observations, did you find that the students um, improved their um, results? Was there sort of like a general improvement in, in point average for the, their course results in the term? Or? It's very hard to say because particularly at this point in time, there was some other quite major changes happening in the unit. So assessment weightings, uh, a mid-unit test turned into an assignment. Um, there, was some, there, was, there was too many changes to isolate with the prototype. This is what's happened to grades. Um, I think even when everything is the same, really if you're teaching the same thing and everything is the same, it's a little bit concerning. But um, even when kind of as much of what you're doing is the same as the, the last point in time. It's it's still a challenge to to isolate that. I think with the prototype, my my goals were the student engagement and how the students felt about how they felt about their learning. Whether that translated into marks or not, I hope that it would. Um, but that wasn't it, it, yeah, that wasn't really the goal. Yep. Um, mine relates to the previous question. I'm yep. just wondering about the, the level of feedback you give to students, maybe it changed in the uh, newer version, but if they say get the question wrong, do you sort of give them information or do you give them links yep. or how? Yep. Uh, so with that one, and in fact I should have shown that when I had it up, if you got a question wrong, uh, there was a button where you could request feedback and you got a sentence or two. So there was, there was kind of you could ask for feedback before you answered the question because you didn't know or you could get feedback if you got the question wrong. Uh, but it was fairly basic, it was kind of sentence or two and I'll show you how that that was one of the the improvements in the next version okay so quickly because I'm looking at the clock and seeing I'm gonna be a liar um, so here was a couple of student comments from surveying them um, the first two were pretty common types of comments that I got there was there was a lot that really followed um, what got said here. And the third comment uh, was from one of the students that very clearly didn't like this at all, and this is why. Um, no, no, it's, uh, it's something we've thought about, but, but animation is fairly hard. Um, that you could have a dog as well as a cat, but they maybe not. They actually watch the animals, they move subtly, but they do move differently. And the items and things are right for a cat. I don't know why the dog would want the scratching pole. Yes. Well, so everything had to be built for the assets we were. Yeah. Yeah, so, so he was. So, so that was a that was a that was a free open source cat that we saw, um, and I think yeah. So the things like the jet pad, the, the top pad, that that was artwork that um, the programmers did to add on to the open source cat that was free, which is why we had that cat, and not a different cat. <laughs> um, okay, so this was pretty the the kinds of stuff that students were saying. So it was very encouraging. Um, so I'd done the first half of the project, and that was really great. Uh, and then Learning Transformations came up with their, what are they called, seed grants? 
They were also called seed grants. Uh, and you could request up to $10,000. And so I already had this proof of concept. Uh, I'd serve the students. I had evidence that students liked it. Um, and I had some plans. Uh, two of the big bits of the plan, one was that it became a whole semester learning resource. It wasn't just a one week, here's one topic, but it covered, it had question banks that covered the whole semester. So it was something that they kept coming back to. For them to keep coming back to it, it needed uh, more of that game stuff as well. So if you could buy all of the stuff in the first week and there was no new, nothing new happening, uh, then you might just go back to doing your exercises on Blackboard, which would be fine, or you might not do your exercises, which would be less fine. Uh, so I wanted to have it as something that students would keep using rather than use once. Uh, so that involved question banks, involved a better way of displaying the questions. Um, the other thing I wanted was better feedback. So currently, your, your hints and your feedback, you've got a one-liner. Uh, and sometimes that's all you need. What is the median? Well, it's put the numbers in order, it's the middle number. You know, one, one or two lines might get you there. Um, but particularly as the concepts get a little bit trickier, you can't fit good feedback or a good hint or a good clue into one line. Uh, and so what I did with that was that uh, I developed a set of YouTubes. So there was, there was video assistance where, um, where kind of text assistance wasn't going to be enough. Um, if I could make the cat and the interface and everything just look a little bit more professional as well, that would also, that would also be great. Um, so I was successful in the grant, which was very good. Uh, and I contacted my two programmers who had done the first version and both, uh, I definitely don't want to say unfortunately, but uh, bad for me, good for them. They said, well, that work experience with StatsCats was great and we've both got jobs and that was kind of paid a, played a key part in our portfolios. Uh, so one of them at one point, I don't know whether one of you guys said it as well, but certainly out of the first two, one of them said, you know, I would have done this for free. And oh, it's like, nice. it wasn't you. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys, I think you guys said something. Something. Yeah. Yes. Um, Certain, yeah, cer certainly in both cases, the amount of hours of work that went into it was well beyond what the budget would have covered. Um, so, having so it was really important for me that that the programmers were getting something out of it as well in terms of work experience, in terms of something that um, project design, project man management. Um, I was very open to suggestions and ideas and. And there's bits in both games that, that were because I just kind of said, what do you guys think? Um, so that was really good. Uh, so they both got jobs and that meant that they couldn't help me. And I went back to Andrew and he sent me some names of some students. And Chris and Anthony uh, are two of the programmers from the second version. Uh, and again, they did a fantastic job. It was excellent. Um, hopefully you guys... <laughs> Got, got a bit out of it? Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, I mean, I got a job out of it myself. Yep. So, yeah, it, it, it definitely helped me as far as getting uh, experience that was useful in the industry. Um, yeah, and just going through create, like coming from being a student and then working on a professional paid project, it was a, a great learning experience in that respect. Um, as well, from the certain stigma attached to student projects as a matter how fancy they are that's not truly paid work. So having StatsCats as part of the portfolio, I haven't yet managed to find a job, but it's definitely opened up doors and I've managed to have conversations where I haven't had otherwise, where I can say, you know what, I, I hired people, I paid people, you know, I did that negotiation. And that's something that my student project can give you. And it also, we ended up with a piece of work that we're proud of, and we're proud to show off, so. Okay, so this is 
I'm calling it version two today. It's kind of, it, it's where I wanted to get to. I mean, really, the, the previous one was kind of version 0 0.5, and this is maybe version, can we call it 1.0 or is it 0.99? I, I call it 0 0.9. 0 0.9? 0 0.9. 0 0.9. Um, version 1.0. The analytics stuff, the qu you know, yep. question answers, whether they've been answered, things like that. The, uh, the stuff that, yeah, so that Lyndon can track how his students are actually doing. That's really the major component yep. that would need to be added to this, to, for me personally, to say that it would be a 1.0. Yep. Um, and then there's some other bits and pieces with cat interaction that we'd like to add, but they're nice to have, not neat to have. So. Cool. Uh, so you can see that our cat, he, uh, he's changed colour. He's um, a little bit more animated now um, in the literal sense and the uh, programmatic sense. Um, he's changed room. Uh, the interface is now a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. Uh, so there's still elements that have stayed the same. We've still got trophies. Uh, the trophies now, we've got multiple topics and multiple uh, sections of the test bank within that that get kind of easy, medium, harder. So you can go through kind of a bronze, silver, gold in terms of getting through all the questions in each topic. Uh, the topics cover the entire unit. Um, so we've still got trophies, they, um, and certainly some of the students who have given me feedback, um, I'm only just now, I put the survey for this semester up yesterday. Um, so we're just getting towards the end of semester one slash study period one, so I'm really just kind of collecting the data on the usage uh, at the moment. We had hoped to have this done by study period four to run it December through February, uh, and we didn't get there, so it became available at the end of January. So the study period four group had access to it for maybe three or four weeks, but really in the same way as the last one, it was here is something you can use to practice. Whereas uh, for OUA for study period one, as part of the weekly tasks, it, it's now incorporated in there. So here's the stats cats exercises that you can go and do for practice. Um, so throughout the whole semester, it's integrated as part of the unit rather than just this kind of thing that's there. Um, again, we've got things we can purchase for our cat, uh, including if we decided we didn't like grey cats and we wanted different colours and uh, the bits and pieces, the bits and pieces, uh, I think the jetpack is animated, isn't it? Uh, we can go around. Okay. Jetpack, sure. So there's more different bits and pieces that they can buy if they do get into the kind of collecting the coins to, to play with the cat. And some students do and some students don't. Some students just like the fact that here are some questions that I can answer and it gives me feedback. Some of them get more into the games. Um, certainly mature students with kids seem to get into it and it kind of almost becomes a family activity. Uh, so it's similar to what I had before but kind of a nicer looking, broader, broader version. Uh, and if we have a look at our questions, uh, so I now have lots of topics, uh, so all of the topics that I wanted, and three or four sets of questions, uh, which can, I guess, vary depending on whether there's subparts, some kind of five to quit, 10 questions per set. So we're somewhere on the way to a bank of 300 questions, I think, roughly, somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, students can do a single topic. They can also select a set of topics that they, um, so if they wanted to practice this, this, and this, uh, they can choose multiple and it, that it will pluck out questions from the test banks for all of those different topics. So if you got to week seven and you wanted to have a bit of a practice of everything that was there, you can just go through and choose, I'm gonna have this and this and this and this. Uh, when we are answering some questions, uh, so it looks a bit neater in terms of an interface. We can still see the cat instead of just having that kind of big blue screen. Um, we, I don't know that the students necessarily appreciate that they're answering on note paper. It might be uh, more for, I guess, some of the slightly older ones. 
Um, so we'll have questions at the top, um, putting the answer in at the bottom. Uh, option to skip when there's things that you're not sure about. Uh, and our little friend here is saying, click on me and I'll give you a hint. While he cleans himself. Uh, and so this is one that does link to a video. So we can link off to our video. Uh, and all of these videos are were purpose made for the game. Uh, so, for instance, this one's 57 seconds long, and I think being able to record a video on a single thing and going, this is going to be one minute, uh, is challenging but also really important. Um, so I kind of set myself this goal. There's a couple of, couple of them where it's a kind of a bigger, more detailed thing, so looking at correlation and regression and SPSS output, where I think there was one where I was two and a half minutes, um, but basically it's to the point linked to that particular topic or that particular question. So proportion, percentage, rounding, median, uh, the different tests. So these all link off from the game. Uh, the student can request the hint, they can watch it, they can go back. Uh, if they get a question wrong, um, depending on the kind of question, uh, I'm sure that's not going to be the answer. Um, it does give us the option of retrying, but then it will also kind of give a prompt of, well, do you want the video, do you want the feedback as well? Um, sometimes for the simple stuff, the feedback is just text. It'll just come up in the cat's speech bubble and uh, for other bits it's the video. So it's a little bit of a mix of each. Um, so I did see a question. I was just wondering, so did you do all this yourself in terms of all the questions, those 300 or so questions, or is that from some sort of other resource and all these videos and feedback? How much of that did you have to do? Uh, so all of the videos uh, I did myself with Camtasia. Um, the question bank was a combination of myself. I had a research assistant uh, who has tutored the subject before. Uh, so he kind of started off, he got, got to kind of 100 and something or other. Uh, and we we're starting to get a little bit behind schedule, so I kind of jumped in and did some as well. Uh, some of them are either the same as or inspired by exercises we have on Blackboard. Try not to duplicate because I don't want the student to kind of see the two as interchangeable resources. Um, so I tended to try and have one was inspired by that. So if you only played Stats Cats or if you only did the Blackboard exercises, you're covering the same content, getting the same feedback, but it's not the exact same questions. Um, I did have one very conscientious student email the other day saying, I've finished all the questions in Stats Cats. I've finished your interactive room on Blackboard. I've answered every question in the textbook. Can I have some more? Um, so I didn't, I, when you get a student like that, I don't want them to, to kind of look at this and go, well, he's just copy and pasted from this other place. Um, quick follow up, is it possible to do a, a leaderboard, some competition between students, like friendly competition? Uh, we, we, we talked about this a little bit and I talked about it with the previous programmers as well. Um, there's a fair bit of literature around competition and leaderboards that if you're not in that top 10%, then it's actually off-putting. It's, it's not something that people get into. And if, they, if they're struggling, because some students will struggle with this because they find the subject hard. Um, I don't want them to look at the leaderboard and go, well, I've got five coins and this guy's got 10,000. How stupid am I? Um, so I decided it was a conscious decision not to put that competitive leaderboard stuff in there. Uh, and particularly given some of the cohorts that do this unit and will use this tool, uh, would be ones that I would consider particularly sensitive to that kind of thing. Um, if you were looking at a higher level, um, maybe degrees where it's kind of, it's competitive entry, it, 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 there is kind of some friendly competition between students, then yes. Um, for this cohort, I didn't feel that it was really there. Yep, yeah, and then. Yeah, um, I was just gonna ask, you know, you said you were doing this program and leave? Don't leave. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully we've, uh, 
hopefully we've caught all of those. Um, so we've, we've, you guys can interrupt me if I, so we've, um, all of the banks are kind of built as uh, JSON files, um, if you're familiar with. Um, so for me, if I wanted to add or fix questions, I can edit those uh, in terms of updating with a Unity. Um, I would need these guys what to. What was the up on the server that you did? Or we, did we, we didn't it? get a chance to test that. We built them all into the game for this yeah. iteration because yeah. we, we were reaching the end of the time that we had. So it was about getting the questions in there and working rather than building that sort of yeah. uh, back end system so that it could be updated. Although that was very much in our minds when we were developing. So yeah, so it's it's possible, but not as easy as it could be. It's we had a couple of plans to do it. Um, unfortunately, it's one of the 1.0 features. Yeah, so I think this this will be the next grant. <laughs> yeah, it's the next grant. Yeah. Um, it's not insurmountable. It should be too difficult to do. It's just we ran out of time to do it. We did. We developed with the intention of building that in. Uh, it was just we didn't get a chance to really get into the depth of testing that we would need to do to be able to say it's robust and that you can update those station files itself without us having to vet them first. Um, yeah, yeah, because this, uh, there, there were a few files that were malformed and things like that that we had to edit ourselves to get them to work. Um, only a couple of little errors, but it just means that yeah, if you don't know the formatting of the files, uh, there was nothing in the back end to sort of fix that, so um, yeah, we, we, we left that out for now. It, it, it'd be something that I'd really like to build in, though, sort of a back end interface for LinkedIn to update questions and things like that. Um, what accessibility guidelines and uh, uh, ethical considerations around accessing the app instances? Did any of that come up during the course of this? Sorry, say that again. Something we haven't really looked at. Um, it doesn't really zoom. Accessibility, no, we, we didn't design it with uh, those sort of accessibility features in mind, but because of the heavily sort of multimedia aspect of it, uh, and also how difficult accessibility features are to build in, uh, that's sort of a whole level of research and design in its own right. It's, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing challenge for stats subjects in general because we have tables and we have graphs and we have, th there's a fair bit of content that a screen reader can't, can't cope well with. Um, so even, even if I had that, the questions could be screen read. If I'm then saying have a look at the graph and you can't, you can't see, like I kind of, would end up kind of half fixing the problem but just making it more frustrated. I am, this semester I have had a uh, fairly significantly visually appear, impaired student uh, and she has worked uh, with a document magnifier um, in other units as well as this unit, um, but particularly in this unit where screen reading was problematic, problematic a number of times, the document magnifier. Um, I'm not quite sure how much she has used stats caps. Um, like I think I think she had a go, and certainly in terms of font size and, and stuff like that, it's in some ways it's a little bit more friendly than Blackboard. Blackboard, you've got kind of zoom options, but yeah. So I guess the the short answer was kind of not not really. It's 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 something to consider. It's pretty tricky. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I was just um, wondering. You were saying the replicating content between Blackboard and yep. here. Do you ever see in a future version three or something um, making this the main interface and having adaptive content almost, you know, even the lecture material, some students are going to enter at level four, you could eventually make this the, because it's such a friendly interface and it's got so much potential to build that. Every so often we did run into a student, I think video, video cards, I think it was maybe more a meal that was solving that. 
every, maybe one in a hundred students has some sort of peculiarity with their particular setup of their computer that gives them issues with Unity. Um, video cards seem to be a big one um, and drivers around video cards and things like that. So I'm always, anything that's not our official learning management system, I'm always a little bit wary um, and partly for kind of an ethics access considerations that if I start, I mean, I've, for instance, uh, I've done Twitter stuff, but not everyone wants to use Twitter or go to Twitter. When I was using Twitter for teaching, I would have a Twitter widget embedded in Blackboard. So if you only wanted to go to Blackboard, you weren't left out. You could still see what was going on, um, but I wasn't in danger of excluding people. Um, so I know there's people that really get into kind of doing Facebook group stuff, and I would never ever do that for the, that same reason that not everyone wants to have a Facebook account and go on Facebook. So this is maybe a little bit different from those examples, but it's still, I don't think that I would ever want to do that because there is that potential that what if I do get the person and they have this particular video card with this particular motherboard and this particular set of drivers and it just doesn't work for them. Um, I, yeah. It, it, you run into the person that doesn't have a PC. Or Mac. Right, that is coming more common that you know, you might have a tablet or something and this wouldn't really run well yeah. on a tablet. So you're forcing them to act Although, Although that's an issue with how crappy mobile blackboard is, but that's, I think, another... With, with a couple of minutes left, it's, it's not something to get into now. Um, and in fact, with a couple of minutes left, I'll try and just kind of zoom through the last stuff. So a nice thing with the new version uh, is we had Google Analytics built in. Uh, and so I kind of had this first release for the end of study period four, and you can see kind of a few students had a bit of a play. Uh, and then you can see where study period one kicked in, and this was part of the weekly tasks that you could do. If you needed more practice, you go to StatsCat to attempt these questions. Uh, at our peak, uh, we had slightly over 150 students in a day. Uh, at one point, we had 50 in an hour. Uh, and that was perhaps more than the amount of server access we'd paid for would deal with. Uh, so that was kind of something that we maybe hadn't fully, we, we had talked about how many students we thought there might be in a week, maybe in a day. We hadn't kind of zoomed it down to what if a whole lot of them all try and use it all at once. Um, and we ran into some issues where they couldn't all log in. Uh, and that's a really big issue. You really don't want that for a tool that you're saying go and use this thing. And if it doesn't work properly, that's kind of can very quickly be the death of it. Uh, so we had to work quite quickly to uh, upgrade our options with the the uh, provider for the server that we were using uh, and get the students back in there and for me to communicate with them that it was now working and here's what the problem was. Um, so you can see we had a bit of a drop off um, but so there's our line for 100 so you can see even just in the last few weeks we're still getting up to 100 students a day getting in and playing with it. Uh, it will be interesting to see what happens to that in the next three weeks in the lead up to the exam, whether we see a little bit of a, a pick up there as well. Uh, but there's certainly students that are still going in and regularly using that. So this is, I had 398 assignments submitted. So there's roughly, uh, then there was a couple of couple of um, kind of extensions and things. So there's roughly 400 active students. Um, and we can't, we can't easily tell. I mean, I, I can't really just say, well, there was 100, so that was a quarter of them. Um, and particularly because this is, this is just open access. Anyone else can. I'm very happy for other people to go and use this tool. It's not really getting promoted heavily anywhere else. Um, but it's, it's not locked down to Swinburne only. Um, so that's been quite pleasing. Uh, we can go down and kind of, if we had more time, we could look at some of, with Google Analytics, it'll break down country and operating system and language and stuff like that. Um, and certainly when you look at operating system, you can see Windows 8, 7, XP, Vista. What was the awful one before that? I think there was an ME somewhere in there. There's still someone, yeah, I know. Still someone uh, on ME. 
uh, and at least five different Mac ones in there as well. So having something where you've got such a broad range of computers, operating systems, and expertise of users is um, certainly a challenge to deal with. Okay, uh, so I surveyed, I'll come back to you in just a sec, uh, surveyed the students uh, at the end of SP4, didn't get a ton of them responding because not as many had used it because it was really just there for those final few weeks. They've just put up the survey for study period one. Um, so I, I don't have um, kind of however many students agreed and strongly agreed and things like that. Um, I made the survey a little bit more comprehensive in terms of some scales around learning attitudes and also one that I found on um, kind of evaluating games as well. Um, so I'm quite interesting, interested to see how students respond to those. Uh, I did grab a couple of comments. The top one was actually a Blackboard post from right, right at the start of the study period. Uh, and there was a few like this where students jumped on and they'd, they'd got in there, they'd played with it, and they wanted to tell the other students on Blackboard, you should go and play with this because it's, it's good. Uh, and just from what they're saying at the end there that's made them more confident, this is the kind of student that I was thinking about when I, I first started with this, and really all along. Um, the students where they're not confident about studying in stats is terrifying. Um, but if stats is presented with an animated cat, well, hopefully it's maybe a little bit better. Um, yeah, so those are all pretty positive. I haven't, haven't had any cat haters do the survey yet. Um, interesting to see if we have any this study period. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much all the stuff that I wanted to talk about. And I've gone right to time, like I vaguely promised I would or wouldn't. Um, I don't know if you guys have anything you want to add. Um, look, this is the first time I've seen these comments, and it's really, really, uh, really positive. I, the, especially the last one with the navigation through the interface, as I was heavily involved in the interface side of things. So getting that sort of feedback. Mm. Just, just one general comment from me, um, particularly if you're considering doing any projects like this, anyone who's watching the video feed. <laughs> video feed um, they might not hear you without the mic. Yeah, they might not. I'll repeat it anyway. Uh, there should always be a consideration to your next cycle. Um, Bindon's managed to do that, particularly with our iteration, we did spend time towards the end making sure that if we weren't the ones picking it up next time, that there was stuff to pick up. The, unfortunately, given the time constraints, like I'm, I'm really, really impressed with what the previous programmers did. What they did in that time was amazing. Unfortunately, because they were so time constrained, we had to spend a couple of weeks unraveling what they've done. Yeah. A couple of months, couple of months yeah, and we're on the <laughs> forefront of that. Um, unraveling what they did and then so we could finally get a place where we could handle and you know, grasp the project to build up again. So, you know, I would just say that's always something, particularly if you know there are aspects to improve, make sure that, you know, the next cycle doesn't have to redo the work. That's what yeah, so I think, I think the documentation, and it wasn't really something I had thought about when I did the prototype because I didn't, I didn't know if anything was going to happen after it, and if it did, I didn't know whether it would be building on it or if it would be something completely new. And also, we just didn't really have the time. So being able to document, document what is going on so that if you have new people come in to pick up uh, where others have left off, it's a little bit easier. So there was a question. Yes, I would ask um, how the registration was. Was that something, does it say anything like the details in the so it's got a database. The user um, name and password as login credentials go off to a server, and that server then contains their progress throughout the stats case. So and the password is saved in a uh, secure, uh, secure format. Yeah, so it's on the server. There's no it like uh, just plain text readable. So that's the, like that. so that database is having it set up separately. 
it's a, yeah, yeah. It, it's on the same server. Yeah. Uh, it was set up by the other programmer who's not here today. Um, and yeah, he set up the back end and the database uh, things to, to make you secure like that. Um, yeah, we just have calls and pass information back and forth. Yeah, so there, there's a question that I asked as well was um, the security of the, particularly the, the log and password bit because a lot of people are not very good with using different passwords for different things. Uh, and yes, our, our third programmer had assured me that uh, it was getting saved separately, it was getting saved securely at what's considered an, an, an industry standard. So, yeah. Yeah, hash and encrypted. Yes. Anyway, I think that's all the time that we've got. Um, anyway, thank you very much, Linda. No problem. And thank you to Chris and Anthony for presenting that today. And uh, congratulations on a really great game. Thank you. And it looks like we, we can tell you put a lot of work into it, so well done. And thanks for everyone for, for coming. I hope you got some ideas from um, the game. So, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. This has been a Swinburne production.